Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us. This is Yoel Cortic, Senior Librarian at Ex Libris. And it is June 2nd, 2020. And you have joined us for session five of a five part series on Alma Digital, which has included all of the topics you see in front of you, both for digital inventory and for digitization requests. This is now session five, document delivery, patron digitization requests, setup and workflow. Last session, one week ago, we discussed the setup and today we're discussing the workflow. We will, however, briefly review also the setup that we did last week. So this presentation and all the presentations for all of the other sessions we've done are available here uh, on this page. And I will send out this link to everybody in the chat right now. Those of you who are joining us via a recording, you can access this on the Knowledge Ex Libris Group Com website. That's the Knowledge Center of Ex Libris. It's under Alma, Training, Extended Training, and under Extended Training, you've got it by topic, and this is under Presentations and Documents, Digital. And I will download this, even though we're not gonna use it unless we need to. And let's jump right in. We're gonna briefly review what we did last week, and then we're gonna continue on. So, and feel free to send in a chat at any time. You can send in whatever you Never mention anyone's name, so don't feel inhibited uh, that someone will know you made a comment or you asked something specific, so you don't want to send it in. No one will know it was you. You can write or send anything you'd like. Okay. So, what did we say last week? We have rules that define what happens when a digitization request is made. And if we go even one step before that, a digitization request is a request for a digital version of all or part of a resource held by the library. And that digital, digital version can come either as an attachment, as a link, or be deposited into the repository. And we went last week to configuration, fulfillment and digitization and copyright rules. This is the main part that defines what happens when a digitization request is made. And we have three here. We have one that defines when the user is not a distance learner. His user group does not equal distance learner, and he makes a digitization request. In this case, it says he gets document delivery link. I'm going to change this to an attachment. So what are we saying here? If the user group is not a distance learner and the patron makes a digitization request, then it is going to come to him as an attachment. It will require approval. It will require copyright clearance. And they can work on the approval or the copyright clearance without first doing the approval. They work in parallel. And we're going to save that. And I'm just going to write down here on the side, just so we have it for our own use. We're going to say, not a distance learner gets attachment. And we'll just leave it at that. Then we have another one. We're just going to look at two today. Last time we looked at three. Then we have another one here, which is a staff digitization request. That means it's staff initiated. It's done by staff in Alma. And there we're saying it's going to go into the repository. There's three options here. The previous one goes as an attachment. Another option is it goes as a link. And here we're saying it's going to be a representation 
We saw what a representation is in the first two sessions. And it's going to go to a collection called the Central Digitized Collection with an access rights, five concurrent users. It, it, it will acquire approval, but actually if it's a staff digitization request, it doesn't. Staff digitization requests do not require approval and just by their very nature. And that's all we've got. So it's gonna be deposited into the repository. And it doesn't matter what the user group is, because all we're saying here is it's a staff digitization request. So here we're saying a staff digitization request is deposited into collection, central digitized collection. And you'll excuse my, my spelling or my lack of spelling. Okay. Uh, and this is a patron. Okay. What we didn't talk about last time is the, the appearance of the copyright or the ability to change the fields. And that's what we're going to touch on now. So let's say a user logs in. I don't need to save anything here. I didn't change anything. A user logs into Primo now. When a user creates a patron digitization request from Primo, that of course is a patron digitization request. It's a patron logged in and doing it. And that's different than an Alma, which is a staff digitization request, which we're not gonna do at this exact minute, uh, but we will get there shortly. Okay, so uh, let's begin. So a user logs in. We'll use the same user we used last time. Her name is Alicia. And she does a search for something. Searches for And we have a few items here about Taipei. And she's going to want to do a digitization request on one of them. So I'll take something held by the library. And rolls around and she finally finds, oops, she finds what she's looking for uh, right here. The journal Taipei, Taiwan. Checks the availability. And she's got a link for a digitization request. Let's let that load. Okay. So it's an issue. And she's going to make a digitization request. And she says she's interested in the article title. I pay librarians in one by Sally Smith starts on page four, ends on page eighty nine. Long article. Uh, now these fields that we see here, we didn't talk about this last time. We see chapter title, article, chapter title, author. Start page, end page, not needed after. So these fields here, and someone asked about this and I said next week we're going to discuss, those fields are controlled. You go to the configuration menu and to the discovery, and then to the get it configuration and to the digitization request, we see the fields here that appear there we have partial, chapter, article, title, chapter, article, author, start page, end page, full chapter, comment, not needed after. Those are all the same fields we see here. Partial, title, article, start page, end page, full chapter, comment, not needed after. We, so here, the user can say false, excuse me, display to public, no, and it won't appear. Now, 
for example, I'm going to remove the comment and I'm going to make this copyright declaration appear again and we're going to see what happens. So now I've removed the comment and copyright declaration is yes. Save. So now we're going to do this again. See, it's got the comment, but we just got rid of it. So now we're not going to do this one. She decides she's not interested in this one. And just to make sure we're getting the full uh, new configurations we've done, I'm going to sign out and sign in just to be sure. Okay, she does a search. And she's going to take this book, Taiwan. She's going to make the digitization request. Now there's no longer the field comment. The field comment, which appeared here a moment ago, no longer appears, and that's because we came along and we said no here. So the fields which appear there, you can't make up your own field and add a new one and decide you want a, a whole other field, like color or a PDF or whatever, but the fields which are possible to appear there you can turn off and turn on. Now, notice I have yes for copyright declaration. We don't see the copyright declaration just yet, but we will see it very soon. Top 10, uh, top 10 Taipei librarians. Okay. By Sally Smith. Starts on page 56, ends on page 78. Oops, sorry about that. Let's say it's a full chapter. Okay, send the digitization request. Now the copyright comes and appears here. The reason the copyright comes and appears here, because here we said copyright declaration, yes. And that is a good idea because inside our copy inside our rule that we saw previously it's required that the patron clicks copyright declaration that they approve that they read the copyright and they still want to make the request so now we'll send this off i agree with the terms And it's been placed. Now, why did we see the copyright declaration which we saw? That specific copyright declaration, let's make another one, another request. Uh, before we make the request, let's go change the copyright. So here, we saw this very end of last week. Inside the fulfillment configuration menu, we have the copyright declarations. And one of those is the digitization request copyright declaration. And we're going to edit that. And it says, hi, here, Greg, I agree to abide by all the rules of the copyright laws as they apply to Alma University and the country of Taiwan. So we have a small change here, and we can even throw in here all kinds of things, like I'm gonna close a bold and close a font, font, and I will say here, Font color equals red. Bold. 
some simple HTML. Hopefully I didn't make any errors in there and save. So now Alicia comes along. I'm just going to sign out and sign in one more time on Alicia just to be sure we got those changes we just made. I'm going to sign back in. Sign in. Okay, she comes along. Searches. And let's say Taipei Information Science. And decides to make an, a request here. Innovative networks, et cetera, et cetera. and makes the digitization request. This time she's getting the top 20, an article about the top 20 Taipei librarians, also by Sally Smith, a very prolific author, from 34 to 67. 68 is fine. Okay, full chapter. Send the digitization request, and now we have the copyright that we just changed. So that's how we can make the copyright appear and not appear from the get it digitization requests, and how we can configure how the copyright will appear. So now we'll say, I agree with the terms, and Alicia has now made two requests. Now we're going to go on to the processing of those requests. So that's the basic parts of the setup of the digitization requests and the placing of the patron digitization request. We set something up for a staff digitization request and a patron digitization request, <clears throat> excuse me, at the beginning here, just to refresh everybody, we went to fulfillment, we went to digitization and copyright rules. We set up two different ones here. We have a patron and we have a staff. Then we created two patron digitization requests, focusing on which fields do and do not appear. We remove the comment. And how does the copyright declaration appear? We changed it. Before we start processing those two digitization requests, are there any questions or comments? I'm going to go look at the list of participants. Wow, we've got 37 people. A lot more joined us. And are there any questions or comments? Let's take a look here. No questions or comments. Okay. Does everybody still hear me? Can anybody just raise your hand or send in a message? Hi, yes, I hear you. Make sure we're okay here. Okay, everybody says they hear me. Great. Okay, so let's take a look at what's happening. First of all, if the patron now in Primo goes to his or her library card, and as you know, uh, quite some time ago, we made a nice little feature here in uh, the Primo li My Library card. No need to first go to the My Library card. You can go directly to the requests. So our sample patron named Alicia sees her two requests for top 10 Taipei librarians, top 20 Taipei librarians uh, from these two resources. Digitization, it says in process. Now, our rule required approval and copyright declaration. Okay, so if we go to and I just want to point that out because that's an important part, because a lot of people are very concerned, correctly so, about the copyrights. This is the one we're using. It says the user group is not a distance learner, and it requires approval, and it requires copyright clearance. 
user group is not a distance learner. And if we look at our sample user here, fulfillment, managed patron services, just to get our patron. Actually, I'm in a different department here. I'll go to my circ desk, main library circulation desk, and manage patron services. Here's our patron, and her user group is faculty, so she falls into that category of that rule, which says the user group is not a distance learner. So that item was on the shelf. Both of those items were on the shelf. Therefore, they're going to be in the pick from shelf list, because now somebody needs to go get that uh, item. Here's the first one, Innovative Networks, and the second one, and third one, Taiwan. <laughs> the other one is another request from somebody else. And these need to come from the shelf, scanned in, and go to the digitization department. And we said last week, we defined the digitization department. We said it's possible to do everything all in one location, which would be the circulation desk or it's possible to do it at a separate location, which would be the digitization part department, with the assumption that there's the scanner there and staff who deal with it, and people who know about the copyright rules and everything else. So, uh, we scan these in. Now, at any time, we can also deal with the approval, uh, but first, let's scan these in. But I do have here, an approval request list, and you can see both of these that we created are in the approval request list. So I can already start dealing with these before even I uh, scan them and I copyright them, or I can do it afterwards, because inside the rule, I'm gonna pop back to the rule, inside the rule here, we said you can work on the approval and the copyrights in parallel. One isn't dependent on the other. Okay. It won't be, you can't finish it without both of them happening, but you can work on either. So let's scan in those items first of all. They're in the pick from shelf list. I'm at the circulation desk that that location is attributed to, and we, we scan them in. So here's the first one. I don't know the barcode, so I'm just going to search for them. So we'll say scan in items. And I'll use the pickup list here to get it. Normally, I would have it in my hand and be able to use the barcode scanner. And we'll do a search on that. And select that, scan it in. Okay. So now it's going to give me a destination of the digitization department, because now it's going to the digitization department. Destination Institutional Digitization Department. And then we'll get the next one. Keywords and That, okay. Okay, here's our other one. Bring this in. And, okay. The other one, one moment. I'm going to go to the pick from shelf list to get the exact title here. Azra, okay. Scan in. Words. Okay. Let's 
Now they're both scanned in. Okay. And they're both on their way to the digitization department. If somebody were to search for this in Alma, it would say in transit, not in place. Here it is. And same thing here in Alma, excuse me, in Primo, if someone comes along here, it's going to be on its way somewhere. Not available. It's not available because it's not on the shelf. It's being in process somewhere. In this case, it's in transit to the digitization department. Now, uh, somebody is at the digitization department, the item arrives there. Now we're in the workflow stage. So, I'm gonna switch desks. Typically, it would be somebody already at the digitization department. And here we are in the digitization department. In here, with the digitization, in here, we've got in process items. That's everything that has been scanned. Excuse me. That's everything. Sorry. Fulfillment approval request list. We'll start here. Okay. So these now are awaiting approval. And we'll approve the two that we did. Great astronomers will leave for somebody else. Uh, now, we see all the details here as well. I'm going to add another column here. I'm going to add the request notes. Because last time, uh, somebody asked about how do we see, I can also do issue volume. I can do a lot of stuff here. Somebody asked, how do we see the details of the request? What needs to be uh, scanned, et cetera? And I sent out a update with that answer because we ran out of time. But here inside the request notes, you can see it all. I'm going to get rid of the creation date and expiration date just so I got more room here. Creation date, expiration date, and done. Okay. So here, let's just make our columns a little nicer. And I probably don't need the approval date because if they're waiting for approval, they don't have an approval date yet. And I see here it's also waiting for copyright. I see that the copyright declaration has already been signed. And here I can see the details. The details of what is requested to be scanned. So I'll approve this one, work on. And I can put in a copyright clearance number if I have one. I can add a file, which is the copyright, and then approve it. And why is it approved? These are the various options. And done. So the first one is approved. Now we'll approve the second one. Work on and approve. I'm not even going to put in a copyright clearance number this time. Submit my approval. Now both of them have been approved. Uh, now, we need to scan them in here as well. They were in transit. They arrived. Now we scan them in. And again, I can scan them in and then do the approval. I can do the approval and then scan them in. Doesn't matter. So let's first of all scan them in here. So. The first one, we still don't have the barcodes. I probably should have copied them so I could just paste them right in, but no big deal. One of them is Taiwan Azra. Okay. Spell that properly. Okay, so we're scanning the first one. Okay. And now we can start working on it. We see it's a patron digitization request. Now we'll scan in the second one. And this one here, innovative networks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Both of these are scanned in. 
And I work on these in the in process items. And if you can go directly to the in process items right here after scanning them in, or it might just be that one person scans them in and later on somebody works on them. If that's the case, then we can go at any time to the fulfillment manage in process items. And here's the items that we want to work on. So let's start working on these. Now I have a sample. PDF, which is just the file that says I am a PDF just for the purposes of. Uh, attaching it and we see here also here they're looking. It's a chapter article title called top 20 Taipei librarians by Sally Smith from page 34 to page 68. We come along. We go to the next step. In the next step, we're going to attach documents. Now note here, it says attach documents. Later when we do the staff digitization request, uh, it's going to be attach inventory or a representation. Because now we're just doing a document which is going to be an attachment. But if you recall, the rule for the staff digitization request does a deposit into the repository. So here we'll attach the document. I'll select the document. And I just have this a PDF file. Open. And add the attachment. And I'm going to say done. Once I say done, it also transits back to its original location. So you don't need to scan it again. I'll click done. And that's it. Now I've got the other one here, the top 10 Taipei librarians. And again, next step. Again, attach documents. Add the attachment. Here's my PDF file. That would be a file that at the desk here, somebody uh, scanned from page whatever to page whatever. And they attach it. Add attachment. Again, done. And now both of these items, first of all, are going to be in place already. When I click done, which I didn't have to do, uh, they already went back to where they belong in place. Alicia, who is our sample patron, if we go to her mail, We'll now have two messages notification item letter. Here it is your request to create a digital version of the following material has been completed. Here's the attachment. I just save something as a very simple PDF. So she got the attachment again. Your request to create da 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 Taiwan and she's got the attachment. So the digitization requests have been completed. Now, I see somebody asks a question here. Let me go into the chat. Uh, is there a way to see if there are multiple requests on one item? Is there a way to see all of the requests for that item without having to scan the item in multiple times? Yes, there is. And we'll take a look at that right now. Uh, once the file is delivered by document delivery method, can we still find the file in Alma? No. I'm going to paste both of these without the person's name. This is from two different people. I'll paste these so everyone can see the questions and then I'll answer them. And okay, so this is the first question. And here's the second question. I'm going to answer the second question first. The answer here is no. You can never find this attachment that we sent now to Alicia. You'll never find it in Alma. It was not deposited into the repository as a file of a digital representation. It was only an attachment. So it's never going to be part of the repository. No one will ever find it. It's just an attachment in an email. 
However, we, we there's a possibility, like we saw, and we're going to see it soon. Uh, I'm going to go back to the configuration for a moment. Here, when we look at this one, hopefully we'll look at it. It's already 36 minutes into our session. If we choose this top one, then you'll find it in Alma. Then it's a digital, then it's actual digital inventory and it's part of Alma and we're going to get to that soon. Regarding the other question, which is, can you see all of the requests at once? Yes, you can. You can always see all of the requests, not only multiple digitization requests, there might be two digitization requests, one physical item request and one uh, work order request. You can always see all of the requests on something. And let's very quickly do an example of that. So these are all done. I'm going to get another patron here. Let me go to my users just so I get another sample patron. User with that name. Nope. This name. Nope. Okay. And. I'll just take a different user. Okay. So Mary Boatser. Okay, so she's not a distance learner. Also, we can use Mary Boatser. Okay. So let's say two patrons now come in. One of them is Alicia, and one of them is a girl named Mary. So Alicia comes along. We're going to have multiple requests now on one item. And now she makes another digitization request on this Taiwan Moise Azra. And clicks here. Browser is stuck for a moment. That. And makes a digitization request. Digitization. Top 30 librarians, top 30 Taipei librarians. Sally Smith, a very prolific author from 34 to 45 and full chapter send agree okay so one patron now has made a request on this and along comes another patron in primo Oh, I think I spelled it wrong. That's all. Sorry about that. There we go. And now this patron also is going to make a digitization request on the same item. That, that one bibliographic record has uh, one item. Great. Agree with the terms. Now there's two digitization requests on one item. So first of all, anytime looking at a item, there's a couple of places where we see this. If someone were to see this item here, uh, 
Okay, so we see here there are two requests. Only the first one is on the pick from shelf because the next one's in the queue. But we see here that there's two of them. Uh, it's going to be in the pick from shelf list of the library, which has the circulation desk that owns the item. So here we'll go main circulation desk. Scan it in. And again, I still don't have the barcode. Scan it in. And okay. It gets transited now. the digitization department. Go to the digitization department and scan it in here. Now here, by the way, let me go to the approval request list. Okay. Here we'll scan it in. Scan in items. Okay, this is the first one for Alicia. She made it before Mary. You see that there's in the queue here. I'm going to click that for a moment. Here we can see both of them. Here's the request queue. Again, when I scanned it in, I see that there are two of them. I'm in the digitization department. In the digitization department, I see that there are two requests and i can click on that it's a link and i see both requests one is already being digitized and the other is not in process yet because we're dealing with the first one right now and in the approval rules approval request list we'll approve that one approve submit Boom. We in the in process items, we can start working on it. Next step attach the documents. And here and here. Now, if I click done, it's going to go back to the main library already, automatically, and be in place. If I click done, like we did last time. However, if I do save, it's going to stay here still. And then I can do whatever else I want on it. I'm going to edit it though. Oops, sorry. I'm going to say done. It's already uploaded, done, and it's back. But I could have also scanned already the second digitization request. I saw that there were two. I could have scanned the second one and been done. Now it's already back. But I don't need to scan it in again in the uh, in the main library where it's owned. I can scan it in right here if I want to work on it again here. Still physically with me. Here it is. Go to the manage and process items. Attach for this person. the document we could have scanned already or now we could have scanned already because we know there were two requests done this one also needs the approval because we said they both need approval and copyright submit 
And now we're done. Here. It's in place. And here. Inbox. Letter. Sent to Miri as well. Miri made the request after. Uh, the request for the following, blah, 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 blah. She made the request after Alicia. She has the attachment, and Alicia also has the attachment. Okay. I know there might be more questions, but let's move on to the staff digitization request as well. That's an important one, and that's where in our setup we have the digital representation being deposited into the repository. We're on staff digitization request being into the repository. Close. Okay. This is create a patron digitization request in Alma, also known as staff initiated. There's a lot of different requests in Alma where the staff initiate it. For example, staff can also make a physical item request for somebody. So now we're going to do an example here, just like it says here. Uh, we have a journal called the Journal of Library and Information Science, Taipei. And we're going to do the whole flow only in Alma on behalf of a patron. Physical items, Journal of Library and Information Science, Taipei. Oh, there we are. Okay. All right. So somebody comes along and somehow notifies the staff that they want to do a digitization request. It might be uh that they sent an email or the person comes to the circulation desk whatever it is journal of library and information science here we are now and on this the item is in place on this we're going to make a digitization request and i'm just going to move this to issue and go through the flow it's going to become part of the repository. So, volume 21, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and here it is. Let's take this actual one, two shoe one. Okay. All right, volume 21, issue two, Journal of Library and Information Science. We're going to make the digitization request in Alma. We'll click request right up here. So we have our item, request. I'm a staff user now. No more Primo. Request. Request type, staff digitization request. And what do I want to do here? Which department is going to handle it? In our last session, we showed that we can have an, a digitization department and that it's also possible to do all of the work at a circulation desk. And we can fill in here whatever we'd like. I'm going to get here. So this is volume 21, issue two. Volume 21, issue two. We've got a requester. going to make this for a patron, actually. It's going to be a staff digitization request for a patron. I know this could be confusing, but that's what happens when we make uh, more and more options for everybody. As soon as we say, okay, you can do this and you can do this, <clears throat> 
<clears throat> we get more. There's two options here. There's the patron digitization and the staff digitization. And inside the patron digitization, I can choose a patron who I'm doing it for, because I might want to notify this patron uh, of the fact that something has been digitized for, for him or her. So I'll say it's partial. Now, this is going to be for Alicia. She's going to get a message, but still the deposit will be into the repository. It's not just going to be an attachment, or it's not just going to be into the repository, and she doesn't even know about it. Volume, I'll give it whatever I want here, even if it's not what I said before, just so we have something. Volume 21, issue two. Uh, managing department will be the institutional digitization department. Copyright signed by patron. When we made this inside Primo, it automatically popped up. Here we need to specify that the patron agrees to the copyright because in our rule it requires copyright. So I'll say yes. Submit. So now the staff made a digitization request for the patron in Primo. Let's see what's going to happen now. So we have the barcode here. And this should be now picked from shelf. I go back to my circulation desk. I wish I could take every question. I apologize that I'm not stopping for every question now. We get eight minutes left. Even though you see, I divided this into two one hour sessions just for the digitization request. And still we're short on time. Uh, so let's take a look here. Boom. Here there's a request. Uh, this one already had a request on it. I chose something. Ours is going to be second in the queue here. Okay. It's going now to the institutional digitization department. We scanned it in. Now somebody comes along to the, or somebody works at the digitization department. It arrives in the internal mail. It's on the desk. The worker there scans it in. Scan in items. Now it's in the digitization department. It's a digitization request. And I'm going to add here to my display uh, description. OK. And here it is. We've also got that it needs approval because our rule required approval. So we'll approve it. And we'll go also to the in process items. Here it is. We'll go to the next step, just like we did before. Attach documents, add attachment. And a file, add the attachment, and done. I'm going to do one more. Bear with me. One more, because I want to make a comparison here. I won. Now we're going to take this one item in place. Another request. Staff digitization, managing department, institutional digitization department, patron digitization. And volume three, issue, whatever. And 
pages 34 to whatever, and that's it. Submit. Okay. This was now submitted. You can see here, there's one request. Pure staff digitization. Pick from shelf. If I go to the main library, circulation desk, this is going to appear on the pick from shelf list. Here it is. We scan it in. Someone goes to the shelf and gets it scans it in, it's on its way to the digitization department. Staff digitization request. Inside the digitization department, scan it in here as well. Okay, first we'll approve it. Page 34 to 56. Work on proof. Then the in process items step. Now, here's the big difference. This is related to this question. Once the file is delivered, can we still find the file in Alma? Now, on, <clears throat> on this one, you will be able to find the file. Because now we're not attaching a document. Now we're adding digital inventory. We're adding inventory into the repository. Three minutes. We're going to say here that we're going to upload a file. Add file. It will be our simple PDF here. Save. And now we have a representation in Alma. Let's take a look at this one here. There's our physical item. We'll put it back where it goes. Now, that's done. Back in main library circulation desk. We'll scan this in. Now, if somebody were to search here for this record, it has both physical and now it has this new digital with one file, it has a representation. And if we deliver in order to see how is the patron viewing this, we see that there's an actual file here, accessible in Alma, and here it is. This is the simple PDF file. Why did this happen? This is now part of the repository. It's in a certain collection here. I'm gonna to go to digital titles. it is. It's in the collection called Central Digitized Collection. And the reason it's in the Central Digitized Collection, I'm going back to my rules, back to fulfillment, back to digitization and copyright rules. Here's my rule that says, if it's a staff digitization request, then put it in the, in the repository, make a representation and put it in the central digitized collection right here, this one here. So that's why it got deposited. That's why it went in. It did require approval. I may have said something previously that it didn't require approval, even though we check it. It does require approval. We saw that I approved it, and now it's part of the repository. 
So that brings us to nine o'clock local time. Um, someone asked, I'll get this last question here. Do you have to scan out of a digitization department when you finish scan and attach? No, after you click done on a patron digitization request, it automatically goes back into its location. That's on a patron digitization request. When you click done, it automatically goes back. You don't need to scan it in again. Okay, so that concludes session five of our five part webinar series. By the way, all of these are also on YouTube. If you go to YouTube, and let me go here to YouTube, YouTube, and you go to the Ex Libris channel, you go Ex Libris Limited channel, you can search the Ex Libris Limited channel, or you can just do any search. You even got the digitization request. So if we were to search here for digitization, let's stop this one. We don't need the music. My name is. We'll say digitization. And even just the word webinar. Okay. So now you've got here various uh, webinar series. Here's the one from last time, for example. And we'll be posting this one very soon digital. Okay. So here we have part three of five. This is part one of five. So they're all in here. You can search here as well. Thanks everyone for joining us and we hope to see you for our next sessions. By the way, you may have seen we've got a session coming up. I believe it's on June 8th. In fact, we can take a look right now. Ask the Alma expert about a new print demon. We have an Alma, a print demon. So we've got a session on that coming up June 8th. Yes, here it is, June 8th. We hope to see you there. Have a nice day, and thanks again for joining us. Bye-bye.